uh, by far, um, what I would tell them is to is to support network neutrality. Um, the strength of the internet has been its end-to-end -end nature. The fact that anyone could come in, plug in a piece of software, as long as it obeyed the protocols, and expect to be able to that they could get it to work with uh, a similar piece of software on, at the other end. Um, that's very distinct from what happens with, for example, cellular networks, cell phone networks, where you, it all gets mediated through the, the owning companies. Uh, it's, a, it's a centralized control system. Unfortunately, what's happening is that a lot of the tele telecom companies, frustrated that they haven't been able to get the same kind of, of uh, money from the internet that they have from their other more controlled networks, are pushing to have uh, to exert that kind of centralized ownership over the net. And so there have been a number of proposals to uh, strengthen or to reaffirm network neutrality. Uh, and uh, hope I would like to see, I would encourage policymakers to see those through. Um, accessibility. And by accessibility, I mean both um, the ability of people with various uh, disabilities to have better access to um, the content online and to communications with each other, as well as access for people in communities that have been historically or, or culturally cut off or have limited contact. The, the internet has become such an important part of how the global culture has evolved that it's important that we all can be participants in it and that any kinds of technologies and any kinds of approaches that um, reduce the ability of all of the planet's citizens to be participants in the evolution of the planet um, are inherently unethical. We need to increase accessibility, period. Um, that neither of the last two things will actually take place, that will, ha that will end up in this kind of uh, tiered environment where people who have or organizations that have a primary you know, and frankly legal requirement to make to maximize their shareholder income uh, take steps that take, do the short-term maximization of income while reducing uh, the ability for uh, people to experiment with the web, for people to um, innovate online and to uh, provide access to communities and to people who normally, who have not had access before. Uh, renewable energy. Uh, we have, um, I really have been trying to pay close attention to uh, the kinds of global environmental problems that far more than any than any other challenge we face this century have the potential to really do us harm. And so um, we have a number of, of uh, renewable energy sources that are in, that we're working on that can, uh, that each hold the potential to reduce our, our uh, dependence upon carbon-based uh, uh, fuel, fuels, coal, oil, etc. Um, and while there's a great deal of desire for improvements in these technologies, um, we need more investment in them. We need to have them push further along. I, ideally, I'd like to see us 10 years from now being, you know, having a significant part of our national and global energy footprint come from renewable sources. In terms of the network, um, high bandwidth wireless connections. Um, and this is actually, again, we go back to that question of network neutrality and the role of, of uh, telecommunication companies. There's a, real, there's a real struggle going on right now between um, cellular-based models of wireless communication and um, Wi-Fi-based models, you know, um, internet-based models of wireless communication. Um, you've seen, for example, a number of communities around the country that have tried to develop municipal, free municipal wireless systems that in turn have had um, telecommunication companies filing suit and even their lobbyists pushing through new laws, uh, state laws to ha have free muni wireless shut down. Um, in, the, uh, in the ideal world, uh, the ideal plausible world, um, 
we could have a community or a country where you can go pretty much anywhere that's even moderately urbanized and have a decent internet-based wireless connection and be able to use Skype or some other kind of voice over IP to connect to other people over voice, um, browse the web, do whatever, and not have to rely on being tied into Verizon or T-Mobile or whatever. Well, there's several fold. Within the, the realm of network technologies and the like, I, I think the, the continued development of personal sensory technologies, you know, such as camera phones and the like, there's, there are some remarkable uh, pro products in the lab that uh, enable a greater sensory footprint for handheld mobile devices, you know, cellular or Wi-Fi based or whatever, um, that allow you to both watch yourself and to essentially record what's going on around you. You know, I've talked about something in the past called, that I refer to as the participatory panopticon. And that is a world in which what we wear and what we carry keeps track of what's going on, it provides to us something like a TiVo for our life. Oh, what was that? I just missed that click, click. I can see what that was. Or you know, realize a week later that you really should have been paying closer attention. You can go back and see what you should have been paying attention to. Um, those things are, you know, Microsoft's working on that, HP's working on that, uh, Nokia's working on that. Uh, I think it's very likely that within the next 10 years or so we will see a, at least the availability of these kinds of technologies. More broadly, um, we're moving towards a greater use of biotechnologies. I think within the, ten, within the next 10 years we'll see some of the, the first approaches to um, nanotechnology, uh, molecular nanotechnology. Another piece that I find really important is the emergence of um, fabrication-based technologies like 3D printers. Um, it, we already have 3D printers right now that are used by organizations like aerospace companies to actually print out wings for aircraft and the like. But um, what we're seeing, over, what we'll see over the next 10 years is this, not just a convergence of technological approaches, but a Rediversions, basically, they come together and split off again, of multitude of, of, of methods of production, multitude of methods of communication, multitudes of methods of accessing and understanding the world around us. Um, this is going to be a really interesting decade, both for the, the challenges that we have in store, you know, environmental, cultural, developmental, and the the tools that we'll have to take advantage of the opportunities for success. I mean the one thing I've learned over the, over the past few years of working at worldchanging.com has been that uh, success isn't a given, but it is entirely possible. You know, we aren't doomed. You know, we can, we, our future is in our own hands and we can make the best of it. Chaotic. And I mean that both in the, um, it's going to be harrowing, but it's also going to be exciting. <laughs>